First, a big, broad question to start. Is Oppenheimer the most challenging feature you've ever had to edit? And if so, what was number two? Wow. Um, no, definitely not. I would say Tenet was probably one of the most challenging ones. Because the action? Yeah, just the action and I'm a cornerstone. Um, number two, hmm, maybe Hereditary, just because it was kind of, um, I was just nervous because I'd never done that kind of genre. It was kind of me entering into this kind of a genre thing, even though it wasn't genre in the end, I think. But, um, yeah. Did that leave you with the itch to edit more horror movies? No, definitely oh, not. I think no. what was so great working with Ari is that, you know, he didn't want it. He didn't want a horror editor. So he was, he definitely put me at ease with that, but I still felt some sort of pressure, but it was great. My brain is being flooded right now with so many key moments in that movie where like the shock value largely comes from the edit hitting at the perfect point. Like I can't imagine oh, wow. sitting there watching something and watching it over and over and over. <laughs> That's really good. So let's talk a little bit about Chris Nolan. You've worked with a number of very incredible directors. You just brought up Ari. Do you notice any shared traits among the directing greats, but then also can you pinpoint something about the process of collaborating with uh, Christopher Nolan that is one of a kind and unique to him? Wow, Um, yeah. Uh, I think I have gotten the chance to work with a lot of writer directors. Um, That's been kind of a theme. Uh, for me, and I think um, it kind of happened that way, but now I pursue it because I quite like it. Um, so that's a common trait. And obviously, writer directors are very passionate. They have that kind of a tour thing. Um, I just find it really engaging and exciting. Um, and then Chris, obviously, is they're all different. <laughs> Um, the, what was the question of like what makes something him? something that makes the process of collaborating with him one of a kind? One of a kind. Um, I think what's so great about collaborating with him and what makes it special is um, that there's both kind of this driving force of schedule and time, and he's so I mean he obviously he's been doing it for so long and he does it so excellently that it's just you know it's so fine tuned. But there's also this kind of relaxed vibe as well, which is such an interesting thing and I never would have um, thought. How does he do that? I need that in my own life. I don't know. I really don't know how he does it, but it is incredible. Like we have such a specific schedule and we have all these like mini deadlines and things like that. But like in between all of those, I feel like we have all the time in the world to kind of play around and relax and it kind of, it's such a weird trick. I don't know how he does it. It's like a weird magic trick. Speaking of playing around, I I know he's a very specific uh, director and he writes a lot because he knows what's ultimately going to work in the edit. So where does the playing around come into play in that process? Is there any particular scene where you thought, you know, the creative possibilities were like wider than others? I think what's so great about him is, yeah, his scripts are like a blueprint. They're so fine tuned and He's, um, with the way he writes, you know, by the time I read it, there's very little editing to be done and um, it's so specific. But what's fun about that is, again, it's kind of what I was saying before. It's like, it's so structured, but then he is so open to ideas of the ways we can make it interesting and use editing to make it interesting within that structure. So it both feels incredibly structured and incredibly creative. And yeah, again, weird magic trick, I don't understand. Do you have a specific example of that? Something where, you know, what he had on the page would have worked, but because you have that editor's eye and insight, you were able to make it more interesting via that. Um, I don't know about like more interesting, um, cause it's such a collaboration. I, I don't think there's something I would be like, well, I did this. Cause it just, that's not in my nature and that's not kind of how I see my job. You're such a good collaborator. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think, yeah, I think what's so fun about, for example, the, can you hear the music montage? We worked on that constantly, like over and over again, but in this way that was fun, like we would work on it and then we would both be like, let's move on and we'll come back to it. And we kept doing that and we kept screening it. We both kind of knew it wasn't there, but we weren't being hard on ourselves or it and then one kind of Saturday afternoon we really just like played around and kind of had these ideas and really mixed it up and totally did something different and it was great so I think yeah on the page it was very specific but I think um, with even down to some images but I think he was fine to just try different images we had and just capture the essence of what he wanted but he was open to kind of totally playing around with it constantly. That so is an exceptional so sequence fun. between, yeah, between your editing and also the score. And that's the particular oh my track God. I can't stop listening to. Oh my God. It's 
one of the most incredible pieces of music. And Ludwig did such a fabulous job. His wife, Serena, who plays the violin a lot of the time, and I mean, um, and helped kind of guide the um, players to be able to do something like that live. It was incredible. This is the perfect example of a movie where everyone's delivering peak work, and then it's just like magically all comes together in a way that uplifts every department's work. Mm -hmm. It's like really like the dream scenario with a film. It's It was such a dream. Um, team, I have to say. I love everybody. Everyone's so collaborative. We all know each other, which is rare, you know, because I work obviously in editing and everyone, certain people just work on set, but we all kind of, yeah, cross paths and it's, what a great team. And then there's also a bunch of people on your team. Like we're going to be, we're going to be seeing a lot of people that are participating in this press day. I have a good feeling we're going to be seeing a lot of you in the coming months, <laughs> but what about your team specifically? Is there anyone that you would maybe say is an unsung hero where, you know, what they contributed is absolutely pivotal and you just want to make sure more people out there know that person's name and contribution to the film? Ugh, it can't just be one person. I know, I know. <laughs> because my team is, um, it's quite a team and they all do such different specific things. And I mean, my uh, first assistant, Mike Fay, was incredible. The post producer, Tina Anderson, is incredible, which is what they do with the film department. And, and the whole team, Tom, the negative cutter, um, or he, you know, he cut you know, the, he cut the film as we were screening mm -hmm. it. There's also a negative cutter from Paris. There's there's too many people to name, but everyone has their specific thing and everyone did it with such grace and what a, and such a great attitude, which I was really impressed by. Here's another unfair question, because I'm gonna ask you to pick a favorite in a sense. Going into editing the film, is there any particular character you were most excited to edit for, but then ultimately, is there another character that caught you by surprise in terms of like how creatively fulfilling it was to cut their scenes? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously going into it, like Killian's performance is just like unbelievable. It's just, you can't even get over it. And, and constantly during the editing process, both me and Chris would just be wowed by all the things that he did that we didn't even see and sometimes would come out. It was just incredible. But one of my favorite characters over time, and I didn't necessarily think it when I was reading the script, but I just found such depth and kind of sadness and relatability was Straws, which is Robert Downey Jr.'s character. I quite love him. And I find that scene at the end where he kind of like hits his leg and he asks like, who are the holdouts? And he has, I just want to cry. Like I actually feel really emotional for him. And um, I don't see him as the villain necessarily, even though I know it's easy to see him that way, but I just had a real, I developed a huge soft spot. And, it, and that I'm sure speaks to uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s performance. But yeah, it speaks to his performance. And, and also, yeah, yeah, the writing, the idea of him not feeling like a villain because he feels like a full living, breathing person, a fallible person. But he also kind of has to feel like a villain for a lot of the movie, too. So it's like, it's just such brilliant writing, directing, yeah, acting. I just really fell for his character. Here's a very, very specific question. But sometimes when I sit down and I just like edit little things for fun, when I hit the perfect cut, I just like, I get chills. And then every time I watch that piece back, I look forward to that moment. Do you have that moment in this three hour film? Oh my God. <laughs> One cut? One cut that like right. gives you chills every time it gives comes back up. Chills. Oh my God. One cut. I probably could give you an answer, but I'd have to think about it because it's been a while since I've even seen the movie and worked on it. Fair um, enough. <laughs> yeah. What about going forward now? Is there a new tool in your editing toolkit, so to speak, that you know you can credit to Oppenheimer that you are eager to put to use on a future project? Hmm. I don't know if there's a tool, but one of the interesting things that happened on this film is I was on another previous film, Wakanda Forever, and I came on late to this movie, which typically editors, I think, don't like that. We like to be there from the beginning of the first day of shooting so we can, you know, cut as they go. And it's kind of overwhelming to come in. I came in a week or so right after they wrapped, and then you have all the footage, which can be overwhelming. And I asked a couple of people who had done it before, and everyone was like, don't do it, or if you have to do it, get ready. But I actually found a way to approach it and use it to my advantage. And um, it was a good lesson for me and a tool in my toolbox of like, okay, like I can use difficult, weird situations to my advantage and figure out a good way to work around it. Fresh set of eyes too, it's kind of nice. Yeah, exactly, it was kind of like nice to like not be there and not know anything for once. I mean, I don't think that's always the case, but I figured out a way that I could make make it work. How can you say you don't like editing action? You got Tenet, you got Wakanda <laughs> Forever, you got certain sequences in this, something else. Congratulations. Thank you so much, this was great.